When you're a mature, confident, sophisticated gentleman, you want fragrances that represent that vibe that you are on. I've gotten feedback for our first release, Mr. Fragrant, from our more mature customers saying that they love the fact that it was unapologetically masculine, complex, and it was more mature, more suited to their age. I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to smell like your age. You can easily find the young fragrances in the fragrance community like Paco Rabanne Invictus, or Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal Elixir, but oftentimes we forget classics that smell gentlemanly, timeless, smell more mature. Us mature men, including myself here in this group, <laughs> want to smell, you know, like a sophisticated guy. So in this video, we're going to do eight masterpiece fragrances for more mature men, four for the daytime, four for the night, but you can generally wear all these as signatures. These will meet the criteria of being bold, masculine, long-lasting, and mature. This next fragrance, I think, is a beautiful option for the gentleman. It, it really does smell like a gentleman. This is Atrium Fragrance Mr. Romantic. This is very smooth, inviting, comforting. It's very balanced overall. It's a very enjoyable, fresh, cozy DNA. It'll work in a lot of different scenarios. I think this works year round, could make a great signature scent. And um, yeah, we'll do the job for any upcoming dates you have. For this video, I'm grouping mature men as people in their 30s and up. It's a very much a broad generalization. That's because we haven't got all day, guys. I can't do different decades for everyone. Uh, it's yeah, we're grouping everyone together. So yeah, these are more mature fragrances. Roja Parfum, Burlington 1819. I went to the Roja Boutique for this fragrance. I've smelled a lot of their stuff and I still think this is one of their best easily. One of the most wealthy smelling fragrances of all time. If you're a successful, mature gentleman who's worked hard his entire life, this is what's gonna represent that to you in the scent profile. Extremely luxurious oranges, aromatic spices, some amber, rum in here, very long lasting summer perfume. Ideal for the daytime, 12 hours longevity with a medium projection. This smells like money, this smells complex, this is just so beautiful, it's not like anything you'll get at cheaper price ranges. This is 300 pound for a reason and it smells like it's price tag. And then in the evening time, you can go for something like this, Aaron Terrence Hughes Maverick. This could be worn in the daytime and this can be worn by younger guys in their 20s, but ideally this is a mature fragrance, ideally worn in the evening. This is Aaron's masterpiece, Dark Fragrance. If you like dark fragrances like Carlisle by Parfum de Marly, Black Orchid or Noir, the original Eau de Parfum from uh, Tom Ford, you're gonna like this fragrance. It is his nutmeg, plum, patchouli, dark, intense, brooding, masculine. A nice, smooth, creamy vanilla fragrance overall as well. This is a big compliment getter. This has got me a lot of compliments. So if you wanna go partying at night or you wanna have a nice dinner with the missus, this will get a very good reactions for you. I really recommend this. Eight hours longevity with a soft and moderate projection. Another masterpiece for the daytime is Dior's Fahrenheit Eau de Toilette. I still love this fragrance. I don't know why some people hate this. I think it's a masterpiece. It's unapologetic. It says something. This is perfumery that actually has creativity bared in mind. That's why it's an 80s classic masterpiece that's gonna be timeless. It knows what it wants to be. It wants to be fiery, petrol-like, uh, masculine, green, sharp, leathery, very woody. It just smells like pure elegance. You can wear this as a sexy signature, like if you want to be a sexy bad boy during the daytime on a date, for example, or if you want to wear this to the office, you can as well. It has versatility in its wearability. It's a fantastic signature that still gets me eight to 10 hours longevity with a medium projection. This smells like a man, and I think when all the annoying bubblegum fragrances now that exist become irrelevant in a few years' time, I think this will still be here and it'll still carry on selling for Dior. Chanel's and Teus. Wear this in the evening time. When we have Dior, we've got to match it with a Chanel. And I think this basically has a similar vibe. It's an 80s powerhouse masculine fragrance. Very dark, not as versatile as Fahrenheit. This is more of a cold weather signature, but again, you could wear this in the daytime. It smells just really commanding. If you really think of a boss in a dark suit, this is the fragrance for you. Really, really masculine, commanding, attention grabbing fragrance that has really unique notes like civet, animalic notes with uh, some myrrh, some lavender. So it's sort of like clean and also elegant in its sweetness at the same time. It's very nice. This again just smells like that period in time in the 80s when fragrances were just more masculine. If you miss this kind of vibe, I personally do. I wish fragrances were just more unapologetically manly like this. And Teus is a masterpiece and one of the best from Chanel that too many people sleep on. 10 hours longevity with medium projection. In the daytime, one of the best mature oud fragrances, Aqua de Palma's oud. Now, I don't think this is a real oud fragrance. I'm wearing this on my hand right now. 
It doesn't smell like a real oud. I think it might be synthetic oud, but that's just to my nose. But either way, the scent profile is extremely pleasing. So they don't care too much about that kind of stuff. It's a good price tag though. It's very affordable. I can get it for hundred pounds usually. It's very long lasting, 12 hours longevity, medium projection, this beastly brown bottle anyways for me. And how I would describe it is, is sort of like citruses and lavender mixed together with a lot of thick, clean, creamy woods. So it's bright, clean, creamy oud that almost gives off an aquatic effect to this fragrance. But I still want to wear this in the summertime, wear this in all other seasons as a daytime signature. This will make it smell handsome, professional, really clean for a very long time. So if you want a mature, masculine, long lasting signature, ADP oud is a masterpiece. In the evening time, Zerge of Naxos. This is, what can I say about this? This is like one of the best fragrances ever created in all time. Masculine elegance. Proper, proper special occasion kind of fragrance. If you were gonna wear a black tie to the opera, for example, like this is the kind of vibe you're going with Naxos. Extremely elegant amber, honey, tobacco and then balanced out with some clean lavender in there as well. That's the general vibe of Naxos, just very balanced, but overall an amber tobacco masterpiece. It kind of sparkles in the air. This is the kind of scent profiles you'll only get and the sort of quality you'll get with this kind of price tag. Some people say, you know, you could have got pure Havan by Mugler. Not a bad fragrance for its price, but it's in its price tag. This is not the same in terms of quality. I don't agree. I don't think they're comparable. This is just one of the best quality fragrances you've ever smelled in your life. Fantastic performance around 10 hours with a soft to medium projection. The last daytime option here is Creed's Green Irish Tweed. Again, when Creed was better back in the 80s, they made this. Uh, Creed Irish Tweed is one of the best green fragrances ever made. And it's a shame. We kind of did it with Mr. Fragrance. We put green notes in there and it's a shame that more green notes don't exist on the market because having green notes is just undoubtedly masculine. It just makes your fragrance go all the way to the masculine on the on the genderometer, um, I don't know if that's a real thing, but you can't have feminine fragrances if, if, if green notes are a prominent uh, part or aspect of a fragrance. Maybe they're giving more of an old school gentlemanly vibe, but you know, I think that's fantastic. I love green fragrances and it's a shame that more people don't do them. I think if we're doing green fragrances, we should make them modern still. We shouldn't make them feel like they smell like they're from 50 years ago, but Creed, uh, Green Irish Tweed is timeless in my opinion, another timeless classic. Very soapy, green, creamy, heavy on the musk. It feels like a thick quality fragrance that a lot of other Creed fragrances just are lacking. <laughs> I think it just has, this has strength, this has robustness. It feels like a complete and rich fragrance that's going to last on you for about 10 hours with a medium amount of projection. And think of a gentlemanly man in London wearing a bowler hat, moustache and monocle. Okay, it's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's very elegant, gentlemanly. He's walking down a green field and he's very happy and successful and chipper in his life. Our last evening choice is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Le Parfum. This is the original Le Mal grown up. They took that DNA and made it more elegant, mature and modern and more romantic. This is like a very romantic, slightly animalic fragrance mixed with cardamom, iris, vanilla, spices here. This is a very sexy, spicy, warm DNA for mature men. I do again think men in their 20s can rock this, but I think Le Parfum is the best fragrance for a mature guy in the Jean Paul Gaultier brand. This has that complexity, that maturity, that obvious masculinity in here, but it's now softened it all out. You sometimes you don't always just want to smell like a really aggressive, manly man. You want to soften things out. So I think Naxos on this achieves that effect. I get 10 hours longevity with a medium projection. And that concludes this video, guys. I do wish more fragrances were more overly masculine, really obviously masculine and more mature. I sort of prefer that scent profile myself, even though I'm still technically in my 20s. I do prefer more mature men's fragrances. I kind of think we're in a trend where we've simplified fragrance DNAs just because it's mass appealing, it's not as complex, but I think people are gonna yearn for more complex stuff as more men get into perfumery. You know, like think even 30 years ago, guys, men wearing perfume just wasn't a thing. It was more of a women's thing, but the market to what, from what I'm reading is growing for men. So as men get more into it, they get more into the hobby, their noses will want more interesting, more mas masculine, more complex scent profiles. And similar to fashion, how we kind of start off with the 80s and the 90s, and have that sort of fashion back then, it goes out of date and then the cycle continues and comes back into date. So things like wearing a leather jacket that went back into style maybe five years ago. And I think fragrances will do a similar thing. I think people will wanna bring back that retro style, similar to how you know the vintage style became popular as well recently, the hipster style, it sort of brought back all styles. I think perfumes hopefully will one day do the similar thing. 
And yeah, I really hope that does happen because I like those kind of stem profiles. What do you guys think? Do you think modern fragrances are playing it too safe? Do you wish fragrances were more masculine and complex? Let us know in the comments down below. Which other masterpiece fragrances do you think exist that are best for mature men? Thank you for watching this video, guys. If you like this video, watch our other video about 10 out of 10 masterpiece fragrances. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.